free camping. It said on Wikicamp, so I could go there. Do not rely on Wikicamp. No. You can see how this is working. As that's turning, there's a gear in it, and it's going up and down. Coming into green bushes. Now that's something new. Use the old caravans uh, for houses for free-range chickens. Manjabup. I don't think it is. No, it's this way. Limited Walpole, Albany. One of the problems you have going solo is your navigation and uh, I was meant to turn left at a roundabout out of Manjmup and uh, I reckon it was the wrong roundabout and uh, I was meant to be cutting across to uh, Rocky Gully but uh, I ended up on Highway 1. Uh, luckily they've actually been doing some work on the shoulders of the road. So I'm at uh, Croea uh, rest stop and here we have Croea rest stop. It's just pretty close to the road but looking at the, uh, uh, the reviews it uh, quietens down after about 8.30. Uh, getting a little bit of a fire going here, so I can sit around and uh, have a nice glass, nice glass of red wine. Um, no range here for Telstra or Optus. No range for uh, sat phone because we're sort of fairly low here and there's lots of trees. And I'm just trying to see if I can get anything on the uh, the satellite, but it uh, doesn't look like we're going to have satellite, so it might be a movie time tonight. Um, luckily I've got some movies uh, from Kelvin and Adele and uh, we'll see how that goes. Might, uh, there seems to be a few uh, mozzies here too so I'll put some Bushmans on. Um, yeah, so I'm heading down to Warpole, then down to Denmark on my way to Albany. So let's see what happens. Crystal Springs. I'm currently in Warpole. We've just uh, parked, parked over here. Uh, I believe there's an information centre over here. Uh, you've got your IGA and your shops here. But I just thought it'd be a good idea to check out uh, what uh, the local knowledge is for camping. You can obviously get water here too. This is the uh, Warpole uh, Nordal Up Visitor Centre. So let's go and find out where we can camp. So I'm in the information centre trying to get some information about uh, doing some camping. So, um, Shelley Beach, is it, am I able to camp there? Unfortunately, no. Oh no. No, no, there is uh, no free camping. It said on Wikicamp so I could go there. Do not rely on Wikicamp. No. So please come and see the people that live in the area. We are your local professionals. Uh, we know the place like the back of our hand. Oh, cool. And you've uh, got a few maps here for me. Yes. And, um, so how far to the west do you go and how far to the east do you go along the coast with information? Oh, we can pretty much get you all the way through to Esperance. Oh, cool. uh, and we, as you can see, we're pretty well stocked. Oh, yes. Going across Malibor, oh, going wow. up north. Yes. Um, we try and help out as much as we can, but obviously yeah. we recommend as you go further afield, drop into your local visitor centres yep. who are the specialists in that particular area. Oh, good. Well, uh, I've had lots of good information here. I've changed my plans a little bit. I think I'll be going a little bit further along and uh, finding a camp that I can actually get uh, my van in actually found out that some places have height restrictions too, which makes it pretty hard to get a, a caravan in. But uh, also, what else you got here? You've got lots of local produce. Lots of local produce. Um, the Big Track runs through and the Monday Biddy runs through our area. Okay. So we've got lots of hiking food. We've got... Um, ah. And then, of course, we've got all our souvenirs. Uh, we've got uh, second-hand books, because yeah. obviously as travellers, you won't be able to use libraries. Oh, yes. Like that. That's really good. Local, local books and, and all your little souvenirs as, as people travel around. They like their, you know, their magnets. Oh, well done. And, uh, yeah, so a little bit of everything. This is actually one of the smartest info centres I've seen on the track. Well done. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, nice yeah. to meet you. Likewise. See ya. See ya. So at the uh, Cozy Corner uh, free campground, it's uh, really good. Uh, they've got a dump point here. They've got toilets here and the sites are really good. So it's actually uh, 
a bit of caravan area as well as a tent area. So this is the area for tents. It's not too bad actually. And I'd say there's a track that goes through to the beach somewhere. We've got rubbish bins, trees for shade in summer. So just in case you uh, bought your horse, um, oh, there is actually rules about horses on the beach. Horses regularly use the beach to exercise and access the beach using this track. Please be aware of the horses and take care of the beach and while accessing the beach. To the surface, please keep this area clear for horse wading and swimmers. So it's horse friendly. That's cool. Not a bad beach. You've got some rocks over there. Looks like other camping or, or access stay access area there. This goes right around. Stairs up there. A bit of a creek coming down here. Got their tea tree in it. Oh bugger, they must have found me on the beach. How good's that? We've got the uh, wind farm up there. So this is where I'm living. Okay. It's home. So some days are really good, and some days aren't so good. We've got a rainbow over there, and we've got some pretty uh, bad clouds. So because it's a wet day, I'm going to spend the day uh, in Albany checking that out. And uh, but then over here we've got sunshine, so it's pretty crazy, eh? Got up early, uh, had breakfast at 7:24. Wednesday, I'm heading into Albany uh, to check out the natural and man made attractions. Um, see what we get up to. There it is. Okay, so now we're just turning right onto the Gap Road. Let's wait for this car. So, Tondirup National Park, Cable Beach, let's have a look. I reckon there could be a lighthouse here. This is Cable Beach, you've got your lighthouse up there. So apparently there's uh, some sightseeing and some fishing to be had here. So I'll just come down and check it out. This is a decent boardwalk here. Otherwise, you'd slip over. Oh, yes. It's pretty special. Looks like it's a little bit wet here today. I don't know how good it's going to be. There's cameras everywhere. The Gap Natural Bridge. Quite a good little parking area, though. I'm the only one here. Oh dear. Oh dear. This is scary. And there's the natural bridge. Before it bucket's down, I reckon, I reckon it could be some hail next. But, uh, I'll just follow this track here. Absolutely soaking. I'm just going down to uh, check out the blowholes. Um, it's probably a bit too choppy, it needs more of a swell. 
and it's pretty windy. It's nice when the sun comes out. Well, that's the blowholes down there. Uh, nothing happening. I reckon you have to be pretty careful not to fall in there. There's some warning signs there. And then you've got this uh, silent security sentinel here. Uh, got a life observer and three of these these uh, floats here, so you can actually throw those in. And it's meant to be a, an EPIRB up here, but unfortunately there's no EPIRB, so I don't know what's happening here. Anyway, just just be very careful. Because of dieback, they don't want uh, people spreading uh, diseases from wherever they've been walking before. So it's always good to clean your shoes and make sure that you're not spreading dirty soil. So during World War II, they had this uh, radar station here. Um, and we're just gonna go up there and uh, check it out. Uh, and see what's left of it. It's quite an easy walk. Good track. Nice flowers on the way. A little bit windy today, as I've mentioned before. Oh, here we go. So that's where it was right there. The weather's turning, so I'm just going to head back. Uh, I don't feel like getting too wet too quickly. Uh, you can see the concrete slab up there where they would have had the, uh, uh, one of the uh, radar mounts. The uh, National Anzac Centre at Albany. Let's go and check it out. I didn't actually feel inside because uh, the actual experience uh, uh, is personal and you probably need to do it yourself. Um, but it's very, um, it's very good. It's actually very uh, modern. Uh, you're given a card that's got a, uh, a soldier on it who actually um, uh, went from here and actually fought. And as you go around, you can actually put the card on a special reader that brings up his details and lets you know exactly where he was and what he did. Um, you also get a, a little a digital device to uh, click on to a lot of the displays and it actually um, reads letters and notes and information about uh, what the guys did. But uh, you need to do it yourself, it's uh, well worth it. Um, and you actually sit in one of the areas there and look out and you can actually hear the guys talking as they're leaving uh, for World War I. And uh, yeah, good display. Now I'm going to go over here and check out some of these bits of uh, military hardware. A torpedo tube and there's the torpedoes over there. And you've got anti-aircraft guns. These kids are doing a good job, they've worked it out. They're turning it around. Well done. Pretty big. One of the new ones, or newer ones. Well, here's one of the old spotlight thingies. It's pretty wet, so it might be a good idea to go down into this bunker and uh, keep dry and learn some information. So here's the breakdown of what the actual uh, gun looked like with the uh, shell projectile going through it. We've got all the projectiles down there. What it used to look like. So here we've got one of the guns. Here we have the second one. This one looks a bit bigger. A fair bit bigger. So here's the uh, convoy lookout. You're not going to see much today with all this uh, rain. So from the car park down here, you've got your walk to your lookout up there where you can actually see the harbour. And you've got all the ships uh, from the first and second convoy uh, that actually made the trip across. So um, everything here is recognised. It's got uh, how many uh, how many guys ranks on there? How many horses? Um, yeah, it's got all information. So much information, you really realise um, how big the effort was to go over and fight and 
and uh, most of the ships come back pretty empty and uh, unfortunately only one horse came back and uh, yeah that's pretty sad eh? This is hard house More information. Oh, that's a cell. There's be a cell here. And another cell over here. Well, oh, that's what it would be like. We sold. This is the uh, Desert Mounted Corps Memorial. And uh, this plaque was placed here uh, back in 17th of March. 1964. I'll tell you what, I reckon I'm going to sleep well tonight. It's uh, It's been a, a busy day and they keep on putting steps in front of me. But uh, one good thing is it's going to be downhill on the way back. They've got all these little notice boards. He pointed out that it would be better for us to die fighting on the ridge than to be butchered like sheep on the beach. Walter William Goodlett, D Company. 25th of April, 1915. It's a fair walk up, but it's worth it. When you get to the top, you can see the memorial here, Australia New Zealand, 1916 to 1918. Uh, erected by their comrades and the uh, governments of Australia New Zealand, members of the Australian Light Horse, uh, for the guys who lost their lives uh, during the war. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a good day here, weather-wise. Uh, normally you could actually look out over the bay where all the ships came in, which is straight out there where the pine trees are, and that's where they actually left from. Uh, and then you've got the harbour down here. The only thing is I was here back in the late 60s, didn't know then that I was going to do 40 years in defence myself. And here I am again. I'm still ticking, or just. Here's the lookout uh, coming down Apex Drive. Quite spectacular. And it stopped raining. That's where we were up there. Check out these rocks. This is just in a normal street in Albany. There's even a, a TV aerial up the top there. That's what an important backyard. So I've actually uh, spent the last uh, couple of days at uh, Cozy Corner East, just here. Um, I've done a couple of trips into Albany. Uh, I'm leaving now. I'm going to find a free camp somewhere here before I continue on to Esperance and go down to Lucky Bay here. So Cape Legrand National Park, Lucky Bay. And where I was here was Cozy Corner East. Um, so this is the camp here, and I was actually just tucked in here. It was actually perfect. I could just back straight in there, come around. Uh, there's a dump point, toilet. Uh, yep, a nice camp. And the sun's just come out. So you've got to be happy about that. So I've just had a stop at Jeremungup uh, on the way to uh, Esperance, which is um, probably about a third of the way, and I've come across the Kokoda Op Shop. Now I just thought, well that's pretty cool, I need to go in there and get a coat, and there's toilets here too. But what I've found in here, I'll tell you what, this is, this is a find. I've got a Gazman pure wool jacket for five dollars. How about that? So um, I've got to go and talk to the ladies and see what else they know and what else they've got. This is the um, Kokoda Op Shop in Jermungup. Its opening hours are Thursday 10 to 3, Saturday 9 to 12. So what a jag that I actually found it open on a Thursday. So I actually thought this little area here was it. But then when you actually look out here, just look how huge it is. It is magic, look. It's got, they've got books here, and they're all organised. There's none of this just chuck them in a big pile thing. Um, they've got heaps of kitchenware here. 
Uh, they've got ladies' jackets, men's shorts. It's uh, It's got everything. Then over here, they've got the DVDs, little shoes. There's all shoes and everything. But uh, definitely, if you're passing this way, you need to check it out. They've even got little bride dolls here, which is pretty cool. Cooking books, lots of kids gear here. Little of jewelry. And here's a lady here, and there's another lady. There's two ladies. So tell us about this. What, what's the organization? What are you collect, collecting the money for? Uh, it's the Kokoda Op Shop. Yes. Um, the money is all um, donated back to the community. Oh, very good, yes. Yeah. And what are some of the things that you've actually done in the community with the money that you've, you've done? Yes, we've upgraded the toilets. Well, I just noticed that. New toilet block. Yep, mm, very good. Uh, donated to the school. Mm. Oh, well done, guys. And so most of the people from the town donate to the Op Shop? Oh, incredible. Yes. And how big... Have a look around the corner. Of what we've got to do with this oh wow, there's heaps here, and there's a good helper. What's your name? Uh, Lara. Lara, well you're doing a good job helping out here. There's lots more to do, so get back to it. <laughs> yeah. So how many people are in town? What's the population? 150. 150. Yep. Yeah. And I would suppose it's all the surrounding farms as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to keep warm now. Uh, nice to meet you guys. And uh, this is probably the best op shop I've seen in Western Australia. So look at that. Oh, awesome. So, no, really good, guys. Well done. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. And you yeah, too. Thank you. And you too. See ya. We're coming to Raventhorpe. And it looks like they're uh, big wheat producers here. And it looks like they've got silo art. And they're RV friendly. It's like a nice little town. So it's got a decent pub. RV parking, here we go. 48 hours, we've got it. We're in uh, Ravensort, we've uh, got a really good little chemist here. One thing you find in these little towns where there's a, a main street and a hill, um, if you've got your caravan on and you're actually uh, walking, then uh, you get pretty fit. So there's the liquor barons over there. We'll just see what's happening down here. Looks like a lolly place down there. So we've got a farming and mining display. That's pretty good. I don't know how to open this. There you go. So a windmill, still going. Got the cart there. The old fire truck. Uh, tractor, uh, looks like a cedar of some kind, lots of metal, uh, plow. You can see how this is working, as that's turning there's a gear in it and it's going up and down and you can see this going up and down here. Uh, in the day you'd have some sort of a pump here that would actually pump the water. Got some nice cars here. Cars. Lots of nice trucks. There's a couple of baths there in the back of that truck. This one's seen a fair bit of action, I'd say. Your harvesters over there. Some more modern uh, tractors over there. That one there was last used in 1980, so that's that, not that long ago. So you've got your tourist information and museum. A vet over there, or oh, there's a vet. Gifts over there. Lolly shop there. And here, what have we got here? Buffalo pits. Hopeton to Ravensort Railway. So that's one of the old carriages they've actually converted. Maybe it's a, I don't know if it's an Airbnb or something. Buffalo pits. That's, a, that's an old one. 